All right, Emma. So I don't know if you've watched the show before or not, but I usually ask everybody kind of the same question at the start. And uh, the question is, uh, who is Emma Boyd today for people who don't know you? Um, so I am a Canadian lawn bowler, originally from Vancouver. Um, I've relocated to Australia, going to school here in Australia. Um I'm just, I'm, I think as myself, as a pretty bubbly, ambitious, confident person um, and hopefully likable. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. But like, honestly, my life right now is revolving around long balls. And that's funny to some people, but um, I really, really enjoy it. So for school, what are you currently taking and how is school there in Australia? Yeah, so um, I'm studying marketing, so I'm doing um, a diploma, so I'm into my second year of that course and um, it's, yeah, it's a lot different, like I'll be talking to my mom um, on FaceTime and stuff and it's it's just completely different, like thankfully we don't have any, at the moment we don't have any um, cases that are being transmitted um, except for in hotel quarantine so we don't have any coronavirus in in my state at the moment so we're allowed to go to school we're allowed to attend and then I I can go yeah I can basically just go whenever I want um, but they're also doing online so some student students had to go back to um, their, their home countries and uh, so now they have to d d attend via Zoom so Interesting, um, you mentioned obviously uh, you started originally in Canada and moved to Australia, uh, what was the original reason that you decided to take that uh, that opportunity? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of funny, my, my two really close friends at the time, they had wanted to go to Australia for since they were young and like I wanted to go to Australia since I was young as well like I did um, a school project on a country and it was Australia like everything everything leading up like in my life like had just, even before lawn bowls and um, so my two good friends they just said hey we want to go backpacking let's go to Hawaii and Australia and so I've been here since pretty much except when I went back home um, a year and a half ago so what, what made you stay in Australia? I know it was a trip to, to start with, and since you've been there for a fairly long time, uh, why yeah. do you stay? Um, so I got a, a job in the Arable shop in Burley, and so just being around everybody, um, being around bowlers, constantly being able to go into any tournament I wanted um, and find really, really good competition uh, was was definitely a bonus. Um, the lifestyle here is just <laughs> fantastic, as you both would know. Um, yeah, just just lots of things as well. I met my partner Dale, and um, I met him uh, maybe four months into being here, and we've been together since then. And yeah. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, I have to keep up with FaceTiming my family a lot, and then we are in a pandemic, so I, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to go home, but it's nice to catch up with everyone on FaceTime and Zooms and stuff. Obviously, a lot of young uh, bowlers in Canada, obviously, uh, they want to take the opportunity to maybe move down to Australia. It's definitely a thought that a lot of people have had. Would you Would you say it's worthwhile for people if it's a possibility for them? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Just solely based on the connections that you make with people. Um, say you even come for six months. Um, the connections that, that you make in that six month span, like that might bring you back in 10 years time, five years time. Like um, potentially that person could be playing in, in a tournament in Canada, you know, like, and then you just know them. Like the bowls community is so small, but so big at the same time that it, the connections just make it, make it unbelievable as well as just learning how to play um, in more of an Australian style than a Canadian style. Um, it's all really beneficial just being on the green here. So how do you think your, your bowling game has improved since being there? Um, 
I think it's definitely improved just because of the different uh, surfaces. So obviously a slow green compared to um, immaculate quick green. And it's just, um, I think my delivery, mainly my delivery has just slowed down a lot more, um, become a lot more consistent. There's still lots to, to work, of course, but um, just moving from slow to quick, I've sort of picked it up a little bit, a little bit faster. That's what I'd say. And then playing, playing all the time and um, being around people who make different shot selections as you um, just sort of gives you a better insight on bowling. Um, assuming down the road you're playing for Canada and uh, the tournament you're playing for is held somewhere that's not in Australia or somewhere that has really quick greens, uh, what do you think the transition back to that will be like for you? Back to slow greens? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, in Australia, we still have, like, relatively slow greens, not, like, 10, 9 seconds, but you say, like, 12, 12, 13 seconds. Yeah, sometimes it can be, uh, like, 11 after 6 or 7 p.m. Um, if the greens just come back in from being renovated. And I, I feel like the transition will hopefully be a quick one. Um just to sort of get back to like my grassroots of bowling and um i feel like I'll, I'll hopefully pick it up pretty quick but like i said we do have some slow greens here as well so it sort of um kept me kept me in in the whole loop of slow greens like i would definitely say i still play play better on slow greens just because i feel more comfortable interesting um so you are part of the the, the national team uh, under Terry Scott. Um, what has it been like being part of that team, and uh, how have you been? Uh, I guess dealing with the training and the and the coaching. Uh, I guess being closer to where Terry is than uh, most of the Canadians here. Yeah, um, I just find that it's it's easier to sort of like maybe talk to him. So if I send him an email um he'll reply um because we're in similar time zones so that's that's nice so send him a message on facebook or something um he'll get back to him it's not like one in the morning so that's nice and then um we always just say to each other sort of like we're so lucky to be in this half of the world you know because we can be bowling and we can be going out and doing things so that's that's definitely a bonus and it's just nice to sort of occasionally connect with with terry like it it doesn't have to be all the time like over christmas we all took a bit of a break which was nice and i think it was it was definitely needed but it's just nice to sort of connect monthly with everyone or not everyone with terry but when we do connect all together it's nice to see everyone's face so Emma, you mentioned the pandemic a few times, and uh, I'm just curious because obviously we've lived through the pandemic here in Canada, and it's been pretty sucky to say the least. What's it been like uh, living through that in Australia? Um, yeah, I think it started the same as everyone else. Like we were all panic buying, and like toilet paper sold out everywhere. Like we couldn't find toilet paper, and then um, it sort of started. Everybody started to. We got into what was it? I think we went into lockdown. Um, so everybody had to stay at home. And then that was for about a week. So you could go to work and you could um, go to your medical appointments. But then I've, ever since then, we haven't really had to do anything else. There was a short period in Brisbane when um, they had to wear masks for a mandatory three days. Everybody had to stay home. But since we're on the Gold Coast, we didn't have to do that. But if you had traveled in Brisbane, you had to quarantine for three days at home. So honestly, we've been very, very lucky. Um, yeah, very lucky compared to other parts of the world. Uh, it, it looked like Bulls was getting back pretty quickly on that side of the world. Um, obviously, a lot of um, the Facebook groups are streaming a lot of competitions and whatever. What kind of uh, competitions have you been into recently? Um, well, recently, because we've just come into sort of Premier League season, so I'm playing Premier League in, so there's a top side, so that's the main um, three teams, the main 12 players, and then there's a reserve grade, so that's called the A team, um, or the A side, and so I'm in that side, and I'm leading in an all-women's team, so it's it's really, really nice, and it's a really good dynamic. 
Um, so we've mainly been playing that. So we play Saturday, sometimes Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then there's just been the occasional, like, um, triple tournament on the weekend when I can get some time off and then just a few, just a few little fun things. But mainly right now it's Premier League season. Have, uh, have you been working in or around any bowls clubs recently while you've been in school? Yeah, um, so right now I'm working at the bowls club at Burley Heads. And so I'm just doing reception work there. And then I'm doing um, some barefoot bowls there as well. Nice. So you talked about Premier League and some of the stuff that you're in. What would you say is the, I'm, I'm not going to say the biggest difference, but some of the, the main differences between how you play there and the competitions there versus what we typically see in Canada from day to day? Um, probably the first thing like you, you would look at, like if you look on the green is there's a few more young people, I'd say, um, a fair few more young people and a fair, a fair few older people as well. No doubt. Like some of the, so, yeah, some of the, some of the players at my club, especially like are, are amazing but um the main differences would probably be um outfits and then maybe a little bit more banter on the green camaraderie a little bit more potentially um but yeah it's just when you step on the green and especially when you're playing premier league there is this whole sort of team aspect and um everybody's going oh good shot here good shot there like and just like clapping and cheering and yeah it's it's just really nice environment to be in um and you feel really sort of comfortable what are some of the the main things you miss from being at home whether it be inside bowls or outside of bowls other than obviously you miss your family but yeah um yeah well first off the bat definitely my whole family i have, I have quite a big family so um, it's, it's hard to keep in touch with everyone all the time, especially with the, um, time difference. But what I miss, honestly, what I miss the most is pierogies. <laughs> really? <laughs> pierogies so bad. <laughs> but, um, other than that, just, yeah, friends, family, a lot of my, like, um, bowling teammates that I played with in BC definitely miss, miss quite a bit, few of them. Um, yeah, the the clubhouse, the greens, like there's just a different sort of, yeah, it's a smaller, smaller club, but it's, it, there's a more homey feel, if that makes sense. But just the clubhouses are so small and tiny. It's just a, a shed with bowls in it. And then there's a clubhouse with like a bathroom and everything and maybe a small entertaining area. Like I, I miss that homey aspect of it a little bit. I can see that for sure. Um, speaking of Canada, um, you did a lot of winning and you ramped up basically your Bulls career really fast. Um, you've, you've won a bunch of competitions, you went overseas, and then you were in Australia, um, and it seemed like just a flash. Uh, what is the highlight of your career so far as far as bowling and winning oh. and doing that stuff? Um, I definitely, um, enjoyed playing, um, last year in the under, under 25, um, world championships. So I went back to Canada to visit my family and then also to qualify to go. So I qualified to go over there and that was, that was unbelievable. Even just the trip coming from Australia to go to England was like a whole trip in itself. So um, that was just, that was really good. Un unfortunately, obviously, I didn't, um, uh, like, get through my section, but just the entire experience was was really nice as well. Um, I won, or sorry, I got second in the women's triples for the state women's triples just a few months ago, and I played with my partner's mom, Jackie, and then Maria Rigby, and that was just, yeah, that was a that was a really great experience to, to get that far with her, and especially Maria. Um, yeah, we played uh, one of my teammates, Chloe Stewart, in the in the final. So it was, yeah, it was it was just nice to play um, people that you're you're comfortable with and um, people that you're friends with because a lot of the time you you'll just know everybody that you play. 
Uh, what are some of the uh, events that you might have coming forward that you're looking forward to? Um, I think we're still going to be running the Australian Open if everything still goes okay with fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, still okay with coronavirus. Um, so definitely the Australian Open, and then um, a few few more state events coming up in the in the year, definitely. All right. So moving away from from your career and and what you're doing in Australia, I have a question and I wanted your opinion on it. We sometimes struggle in Canada to come up with new ideas that stick. And like you said, you see com more camaraderie and cheering for teams and for clubs and uh, uh, for all your teammates, not just necessarily the ones that you're playing with. What kind of event or um, what is something that you would like to see that you do in Australia come over to Canada that you think would really help the Canadian Bulls scene? Well, first of all, not even competitively, probably barefoot bowls, more barefoot bowlers, and making it more of a fun thing rather than a, you know, 10-minute-long ten, ten um, information session about every single little rule, you know what I mean? Like, like I introduce barefoot bowlers, and I'll give them a two-minute spiel. And it's mainly about protecting the greens, you know. Um, and if they want to come back to me or I'll go back up to them and let them know the rules, um, if, if they're interested, they're going to come back to you and ask you the rules and ask you how to score. Um, but probably, like, maybe like a, a mini sort of spinoff of Premier League so you, you sort of have that camaraderie and you have that club club environment but i just unfortunately i just don't think we have the numbers sadly okay. um you obviously see um let's just call them random people come off the road and they play barefoot bulls how do you think we get bulls to a place in canada or north america as a whole where that is a, a normal or a common thing yeah, um, that's really hard because there's such a stigma around bowls being for older people and wearing all white and you have to be proper. Um, but probably just like maybe marketing it a little bit more like um, social media, you know, like getting someone, someone bigger to sort of like give bowls a shout out. You know that viral video that went that video went completely viral um, at Potter's, like something like that, but sort of for barefoot bowls, like to make it known in Canada that, hey, it's a good time. You know, the drinks are cheap. It's a great fun time. You can bring your kids. You can have a birthday party here. Um, yeah, like just sort of sort of um, make it make just break the stigma a little bit, I think. Um. Do you ever see yourself coming back to Canada? Or do you think you're down in Australia for, for a long time? I definitely, definitely want to come back for a long visit. Um, me and Dale have both talked about, you know, coming back for for a, a, quite a while, like a few months, I, I'd say. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely would like to stay here. Uh, <laughs> And like that, I hope that doesn't sound terrible, but it's just, I feel like I've sort of grown a bit of a life and work environment and um, just a, a good friend group here as well. So um, definitely want to come back for, for a long haul visit, um, catch up with the family and do a, do a bit of uh, traveling, if not in Canada, America, hopefully. But yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would like it to be in my future to stay here. Uh, so what I'd like to do is move over to a little thing I do with uh, every guest that we have, and it's dig up some pictures from Facebook and just get your take on either what it meant to you, what it was that you were doing, and um, anything that comes up when you see the picture. Does that sound all right? Sure, yeah. All right. Picture number one. <laughs> yeah, so that, where was that? I think that was in, like, West Van, 
Bowls Club, maybe somewhere in Vancouver, and we were playing um, Vancouver and District Junior Singles. I'm I'm measuring between the two bowls with my fingers, and I remember <laughs> this is so funny. But I remember the guy taking the picture. And I could see him out of the corner of my eye, and I remember like doing it, and then walking back up the green. I'm like, wait, <laughs> was I shot? <shocked?" laughs> like I don't even remember. Like like. Was I shot or not? <laughs> that's, that's funny. So, f uh, for anybody that doesn't know uh, the finger technique, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So basically, um, you put your two sort of index fingers. I've seen some people use their pinkies between, like, um, if two balls are close, really close. But um, two index fingers, cross them over, stick it really um, close to your body, close to your chest, um, so that you don't move measure from one finger to the next between the ball and the jack and then move your body to the middle to the other ball say the black ball and then you have your measurement you have it moved and then you sort of squeeze one eye close and then take a look um and so if your fingers are overlapping the ball then um the other shot was closer i hope i explained that well but <laughs> i didn't I, I don't really think I ever got explained to Like, I just watched a few people. I think I asked Priscilla, like, how to do it. And she was like, oh, you know, you just sort of just sort of go like that. <laughs> that's that's usually how it goes. Nobody ever really comes out and says what it is. They just kind of see yeah, other people doing it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, but that's, that's what I was doing. Oh, this is a great picture. Um, we were in Laguna Hills Bowls Club. And we were playing the North American Challenge. And I love this picture just because there's so many young people and friends in this picture. Oh, it's so good. It looks like it was a little rainy there. <laughs> yeah. That day it rained quite a bit. And I remember I was, I think I was sick. Like I had like such a sore throat and a stuffy nose. And like, because the air con where we were staying was just like ruining my sinuses and poor Fran was rooming with me and one night she took a video of my um my snoring just to show oh, me geez. back in the morning because my my sinuses were just so blocked and I was like why don't you wake me up <laughs> yeah so that no I really enjoyed that trip that was really fun oh this is a great yeah um so that was nationals um, with Lori, Sue, and Cheryl. And so I skipped this team at Provincials. And we played against Priscilla in the, in the final. And then I think we were like six behind with two ends to go. And there was this one shot that Cheryl, she was my three, and she just was like, Emma, if you put the jack in the ditch, you'll get five. And I was like, okay. And then I just, we did it. And then like, but the next end we got one and we ended up winning and so then we find our way at, we found our way to nationals and we were just all four of us were just like oh this is so much fun like you know we we sort of all felt out of our element a little bit i think but it was just a great trip especially with those three oh it's a good story too that's that's an awesome yeah. comeback yeah oh yeah And I think that one was um, the most recent junior under 25s nationals. And so I won that. So that was good. So that I got, I got to go to um, England to, to play in the world under 25. So that was, that was a really, really good experience because I had my whole family there and um yeah, no, that was awesome. And then they were, like, live streaming as well at the event, and it was just great because people in Australia could watch. And then my family was there, and it was just a really, really good time. Yeah, so that's in, that's in England with everyone. So me and Brandon played uh, mixed pairs, and then so it was just like a – sort of knockout system so unfortunately we lost the first game um but it was it was just good to play with him and it was it was a good time um that um that sort of venue was just great 
the carpet was great, the food was great, and the people were great. Um, and then that's Derek, and then Mary. And Mary comes from Vancouver as well, so it was nice to sort of see them all as I was coming from Australia, so... Oh, this we won that's Mel so I work work with Mel um worked with her at a cafe um and then Jackie my partner's mum so we we won I think it was a Brunswick Heads triples ladies triples and so we just all were like thumbs up, up yeah <laughs> so that was really fun awesome uh, I mean, like I said, your uh, career at such a young age, um, going from starting to win and coming onto the scene in, in BC to going to England and playing on the carpet for you know the World Youth Championship and going down and playing in Australia and living in Australia and working in bowls and playing bowls and doing all kinds of stuff, it's been... I don't know if it's felt that way for you, but um, when I was looking back at all the stuff that you've done, it seemed like a whirlwind. <laughs> I think I think I just enjoy to sort of keep busy and keep doing things, and and I love to travel. Like I definitely got the travel bug at a young age, and you know wanted to just keep traveling, keep traveling, and so that's why this sort of like this pandemic is just. I think it's hard for a lot of people, especially people who, you know, look forward to their one trip a year that they get to go on and they save money um, to go on their one trip a year and get, and get away for a little bit. So it's, it's yeah, it's definitely been hard. But, um, yeah, we look forward to that in the future. Right on. Well, I don't think I have any more questions. What about you, Daryl? Uh, no, I think that was great. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, thanks a lot, Emma, for coming on the show. We really do appreciate it. No is, problem. Thank you so much for having me. Is there anything you want to shout out or, or tell people that you're doing or, or say hi to anybody? Mm, I don't know. Um, is this is so, like, typical, like, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, probably not. Um, not. Not doing too much in the near future. Like I said, we're moving, so we're we're moving into a into a new place close to the beach. So that'll be nice. And then, yeah. So just keep playing bowls, keep playing Premier League, and hopefully, hopefully we get close to the top five, and then we get to play in playoffs. So. Right on. Well, uh, we wish you the best of luck, Emma, in your Premier League and all the other stuff you have going on. And uh, again, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me again.